Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a pair of Belgian... Uh, well, these were manufactured by Henri Piper, or we'll just say Piper, and these are a pair of Piper's Seven Shot Mitrailleuses, or volley guns. So uh, each of them is a single cluster of seven barrels. All seven barrels are rifled, which is relevant. Uh, you load seven cartridges all at once in a loading plate, pull the trigger, well, cock the hammer, pull the trigger, and boom, you fire all seven rounds simultaneously. I think a lot of people will probably conflate this with Henry Knox volley gun, while Knox gun also, of course, is significantly older. These are both rimfire metallic cartridge guns. Knox gun was is primarily known for its use by the British Royal Navy for military purposes, where these are actually sporting guns. This was intended to be a long-range equivalent to a shotgun, or a long-range replacement for a shotgun. See, the problem with a shotgun is if you see some birds like 100, 150 yards over that away, uh, and of course in the late 1800s there were no bag limits on game, uh, there were plenty of professional hunters out there who shot as much as they possibly could and took it all to market to sell. That's how the food industry worked. Uh, however, if you see some birds like across the other side of the lake over there a long distance away, well, shotgun pellets run out of energy fairly quickly, and they're not particularly accurate. They spread quite a lot, especially at extreme distances. And that's because they're round balls that are all you know, crushed together in a shell, and when they fire they kind of... The, the pattern is a bit unpredictable. That's why it's a pattern, more so than like a grouping you would have with a rifle. If you want to get accuracy at long range with multiple projectiles, that is what this gun is for, because all seven barrels are rifled, and so you'll get a much tighter group. You'll get something like 20 inches at 100 yards. Try finding a shotgun that will pull that off. So let's take a closer look, because we have both a 32 and a 22 caliber version. All right, this is the 22 version, and you'll notice a first few things just up front. This has really nice checkering, it has really nice grain. Um, to the wood. We have this sort of decorative treatment to the metalwork. I mean, the whole gun looks really nice. It's unfortunate that a lot of the bluing is gone, but you can certainly see that coming out of the factory this would have been a particularly gorgeous gun. On the top of the barrel this has a little patch in the matting that is marked H. Piper, BTE, or Brevet for patented, Liège. It also has rifle-style express notch sights rather than a shotgun bead, because these were rifled barrels, and they were also regulated barrels, which is to say uh, that the factory arranged to make sure that they all fired to the same uh, point of aim, which for a seven-barreled gun is a tremendous amount of work, and almost certainly contributed to why these things were very expensive guns. The heart of this system is a rolling block action, which makes sense because Piper manufactured uh, rolling blocks under contract for uh, Remington, so they had access to all of that information. And if... oh, it's got a really heavy hammer because it has to detonate seven cartridges at once. If we cock the hammer, the difference we'll see from the traditional Remington rolling block is that it doesn't have a, like a lever here to drop the breech. Instead it is controlled by the trigger guard. So you can see how this cams our breech block open, and then that thing falls out. This is a cartridge plate. So you would load all seven of your cartridges into this, and then set that into the action like so. And then when you close the action it's going to chamber all seven rounds nicely. When you open the action it's going to eject them all as a single unit, so you don't have to try and pry seven individual cartridges out. I think it's kind of neat to look at uh, what looks like sort of a clock dial there is actually the firing pin. So it's a single big old unit that gets hit by the hammer, and it's going to pivot, it's going to go forward and hit the rims of all seven cartridges at once. So those little tabs in there are the, well, the firing pin portion. If I push this in a bit, here's the back of the firing pin, and I can push that forward. And you can sort of see that it comes out a little bit. This is a little hard to, uh, to show you because it's not normally intended to move unless it's all locked up. Here are the muzzles. This is the 22 caliber version, this is the 32 caliber version. They were both rimfire and they were both made uh, side by side simultaneously. The 22 caliber gun is substantially lighter and handier. 
but of course the 32 caliber is going to pack a lot more punch to it. So seven rounds of 32 caliber rimfire is pretty darn close to a single round of uh, double lot buckshot, with the exception that uh, every one of those pellets is actually a rifled and accurate bullet. So really kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting idea. Looking at them both side by side, you can see the difference in scale here between the big 32 and the small 22. This 32 caliber one is equally nicely made, and it actually also has sling swivels on it. You can see just a faint remnant of color case hardening, which would have looked really nice on this. This one is actually not marked by Piper, it is instead marked Manufacture Française des Armes Saint-Étienne, which is not surprising. That is the full name of a company typically called Manu France, that was a catalog mail order company operating in France back into the 1800s, and they resold a lot of firearms. So just like we would see retailers, say in the 1950s in the US, buying versions of you know, shotguns and 22s and such that were marked with their own retail company brand names, Manu France had guns marked with its name when it was going to resell them. So this was the alternative, or an alternative, to the punt gun. If you wanted to stick with a, a relatively light and portable gun, but you still wanted to be able to get uh, effective hitting power at extended ranges on large fowl, well, here you go, seven rifled barrels at once. It appears that Piper made something like 500 of these, which is kind of impressive given that they were really expensive guns. This was listed in their catalog as like a $70 gun back in the 1880s and 1890s. That's a tremendous amount of money. Um, but of course they are also really quite well-made guns, and they're just really darn cool. So it's neat that we have examples of both the small caliber and the large caliber to take a look at. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more on either of these, uh, Rock Island has both of them in separate catalog pages. They are separate lots in their upcoming auction. And uh, you can also find out more about Rock Island as a company. If you check out the description text below, you'll find links to their Instagram page and also their YouTube channel. Plenty of cool stuff there for you. Thanks for watching.